the player control is probably one of the most unique classes in the Unreal Engine framework. It represents the interface between the player and the pawn that they've possessed or are controlling. And it serves as the gateway to the server for the client. So in order to do an RPC, you need to be the owner of what you're trying to RPC through. And the client is the owner of its own player controller. So it, it's the ideal place to get messages to the server, basically. So you'll see that as we progress through the, the framework, you, you'll see us coming back to the player controller just to do a, an RPC. So an RPC, just if you haven't been exposed to that before, is just a remote procedure call. It's just like sending a message to a server. Uh, one thing that uh, catches a lot of people out with the player controller is every client only knows and has access to its own player controller. So you can't just tap into another player controller and grab you know some information from the other player. Uh, it, the, the player will have access to its own player controller and the server will have a replication of that player controller. So the primary purpose of the player controller as I said, is that interface between the player and, and, the, and the game, essentially. So the, the player controller generally manages input. So not all input is managed on the player controller, it's just where the input starts and it works its way down to, you know, through the player controller, then you can have input on a pawn, you can have input on a character, but it all inherits through back to the source, which is the player controller. And as I mentioned, the player controller is what possesses a pawn. You can only ever possess, possess one pawn at a time. You can jump between you know, different pawns or characters during the game at any time, but you can only ever be possessing one pawn. So while we're on the topic of uh, pawns and multiplayer, it's probably worth mentioning some terms that might come up. And that it's there's a thing called simulated proxies and autonomous proxies. And this is all multiplayer terminology here. So the a simulated proxy is where the actor is a remote proxy controlled by a remote authoritative actor i.e. some remote client so it's it's the it's another player's character on your uh, game instance but is controlled by someone else so it's it's a representation of some other player in the multiplayer game whereas a autonomous proxy is a remote proxy capable of performing local functions but still receives receives authoritative cor corrections so that means that you can input control into the proxy so an autonomous proxy is your representation in your game instance every player that connects is running a, an instance of the of the game on their own client so what are we talking about here with the proxies when, when you play multiplayer you're essentially running a game instance of the game each so say there's two players in a game you both have a game instance of the game each and then you create each other's player on the on each other's game but the those representations of the other player and your player on their system have different rights and different access so you don't want the other player to be able to input control into your character on their game instance so that's that's where you have the simulated and autonomous proxy and another one you'll see is authoritative so the server is generally their authoritative of the of all the uh, characters and or, and or pawns. So there is one other type of controller that's similar to a player controller and that's the AI controller and obviously it's for AI it sort of forms the the brains of the AI so to speak. So that's that that'll come up when we start dealing with uh, AI in the game particularly if you're, if you're making a game where the AI are sort of representing a player. So if you think about like a first person shooter the um, you know, you may, may have AI in your game running around, but they're sort of acting as players. So the, there's certain circumstances where you're going to have to handle the player controller, but as an AI controller, so something to just keep in mind. So before we go on to creating the player controller, I just want to show you sort of like, now that we've, we've sort of covered game mode, game state, and player controller, let's take a look at how process works when you connect as you, as you launch the game, you start your game instance, and th that game instance creates a game mode, and, and the game mode handles all the connecting the player, and then it would create a, a a game state, and that game state has the player array as we mentioned, and then that game state is replicated to any other clients. They'll connect, they'll get a replicated copy. Your player controller class is created, and that gives you your input, and then your 
player controller will add your player state to your player array. We haven't covered the player state yet, but we will. And then you have your server client and you have you can possess a pawn. And that's and that pawn then is what gets replicated. So I've I've put a few there. There's like movement replication, there's value replication, and there's component replication. Everything on that uh that client there will be sent to other clients. So when a client connects to a multiplayer game joining the server and they'll create their player state, their their player controller will be copied to the server. So that's that's uh replicated to client only between the server and client and then the player controller creates things like the hard and, and user interface and then the player state is sent to the player array and replicated and then the client pawn is possessed and then that that is replicated across to the server as well and then the the client also gets that simulated proxy of the server client so this is where they're both creating a game instance each and then and then as other clients connect their player state will be put into the player array and then you'll start getting that client replicated to each player. So you can see that the server's got a copy of all the player controllers and everyone's got a you know an autonomous or simulated proxy of all the other clients that are on. I hope that sort of like explains it a little bit better than and just, just using words for that diagram. But if you'd like to know more, I've linked the gameplay framework Unreal documentation down the bottom of it's got a few other diagrams there that might help you get your head around it and um, obviously lots more information that I can cover quickly here. So let's move on to creating our byte controller. So in our project, I'm actually going to go to the framework folder here because I want to put this in a different subfolder. Go to create class and I'm going to call this RTS Core Controller. And find the player controller, and I'm going to put it in the framework player. I'm going to have a similar structure, so I'm just going to cheat, copy this. Once again, I don't, don't have much to add to this class right now, but we will be using this for plenty. I just want to cover the basics for this one. So we, let's uh, let's create the same class in our project. Inheriting from our core. And I'm going to put it in the same structure. Just player folder and I'll go to here call structure you can be watching watching me make constructors now <laughs> I need a button for it or something don't I that's that so I'm going to launch into the editor now oh, I probably could have made the or player controller abstract. Got a project open. And then in the editor, once again, there's not really anything we need to set in the player controller, so I'm not going to create another blueprint class, but I am going to come in and set our player controller in the game mode so that the this is the player controller that's given to a player that connects to our game. That concludes the player controller. Up next, we're going straight on to the player state.